Wang Wenbiao stood at the edge of what locals called the Dead Sea. 7,200 square miles of sand stretched before him, an area the size of Massachusetts where nothing lived, nothing grew, and nothing survived. Temperatures plunged to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit in winter, soared to inferno levels in summer. The desert had swallowed entire villages, buried roads under 200-foot dunes, and forced thousands to abandon their ancestral homes. Everyone who could leave had already left. Wang was a poor schoolteacher who biked six miles through sandstorms every day to reach his classroom. Sometimes the wind buried his bicycle halfway. Sand got into his lungs with every breath. Most people in his position would have escaped at the first opportunity. Instead, Wang made a declaration that sounded completely insane. If I can't escape the desert, I'll make it pay rent. Then he did something even more baffling. He released over four million rabbits into one of the harshest environments on Earth, and somehow it worked. The Kabuki Desert sits in northern China as the country's seventh largest desert. Decades ago, this wasn't barren wasteland. It was farmland dotted with villages, rivers, and grasslands. Then desertification struck, winds intensified, grass vanished, sand began moving like a living thing, consuming everything in its path. In just decades, Kabuki expanded more than 25 miles eastward, burying thousands of acres under advancing dunes. By the 1950s and 60s, the Chinese government launched one of history's largest anti-desertification campaigns. They built windbreak forests, banned livestock grazing, dug deep wells into dusty earth. Nothing worked. The desert kept advancing because the problem ran deeper than anyone understood. Wang Wenbiao refused to accept defeat. Starting from nothing in 1988, he poured all his savings plus borrowed money into what everyone called a crazy experiment. With just a small salt company as his base, he began spending hundreds of millions of dollars to build windbreaks and plant trees. People called him insane. Authorities dismissed him as a dreamer. But he kept going, living among the sand, measuring every bit of moisture, documenting every small change. Then came the decision that truly shocked observers. Wang decided to bring rabbits, millions of them, into the desert. Not as a random gamble, but as the cornerstone of an entirely new ecosystem. These weren't ordinary rabbits, these were French-bred Rex rabbits, known in the fur industry as white gold. Their fur feels like velvet, smooth as otter skin, and lacks guard hairs, so it doesn't require shaving or plucking after tanning. A quality Rex pelt fetches nearly $30 while raising one costs only about $2. China now controls over 80% of the world's Rex rabbit fur market. But the economic value was just the beginning. These rabbits possess extraordinary characteristics. Each female produces up to 25 litters annually, yielding 200 to 300 offspring. 25 times faster than normal rabbits with survival rates reaching 96% even in hot, dry climates. They drink little water, eat dry grass, and reproduce normally even in freezing negative 20-degree weather. Wang wasn't releasing these animals into the wild to fend for themselves. He created closed-loop eco-farms where everything served multiple purposes. Rabbit meat provided food, fur produced clothing, organs supplied traditional medicine, but the most valuable output was something most people would never consider, rabbit manure. Rabbit droppings contain nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the three nutrients desert sand completely lacks. When this manure hits the ground, it transforms sand into moist humus, creating the first brown soil these areas had seen in centuries. Here's where it gets truly remarkable. Rex rabbits can't digest grass seeds. This means every time they defecate, they're essentially planting seeds wrapped in natural fertilizer. Those seeds sprout during the next rainy season, creating new vegetation without any human planting effort. But rabbits alone couldn't survive in Kubuchi. Wang understood they needed something the desert had never provided, food and shade. Enter the silent hero of this story, the willow tree. Willows aren't ordinary trees. Their roots penetrate over 300 feet deep, roughly as tall as a 30-story building, tapping into underground water reserves while anchoring sand in place. Young willow shoots became food for Rex rabbits. The rabbits deposited nutrient-rich manure around the willows. Trees fed rabbits. Rabbits fed soil. Soil fed trees a perfect closed ecological loop where nothing went to waste. Scientists estimate each acre in this willow rabbit model produces over five tons of organic humus annually,
converting sand into farmland in just three to five years. Within a decade, over 300 million willows were planted, creating a green wall thousands of miles long that reduced wind speeds by 90% and held back over 15 million tons of sand each year. Wang hired over 100 bulldozers and 300 workers, operating 18-hour shifts to flatten sand dunes and construct windbreak fences stretching for dozens of miles. In just the first five years, more than 1,200 square miles of desert, almost the size of Rhode Island, turned green. Millions of willows grew, millions of rabbits multiplied, thousands of families returned to hometowns once buried under sandstorms. Within 10 years, the Dalad Banner area housed 4.5 million Rex rabbits, generating approximately $76 million and helping over 10,000 families escape poverty. Each family needed only about three dollars to $4,000 to start and could quadruple that investment in their first year. When observers thought Kabuki had reached its limit, Wang unveiled another innovation that stunned the world. He brought solar energy into the desert's heart, building the Junma Solar Power Plant, a massive installation with 196,000 solar panels arranged in the shape of a galloping horse. Visible from space, it's not just a power plant, but the world's largest energy artwork, recognized by Guinness World Records. Junma produces 2.3 billion kilowatt hours annually, enough to power over 400,000 people, roughly Miami's population. But what makes this truly special is that panels don't just generate electricity, they reduce wind speeds by up to 50%, creating shade for grass to grow underneath. Rabbits, sheep, and geese are released for biological mowing. Soil stabilizes, sand stops blowing, a new ecosystem forms directly beneath the solar panels. By 2022, Junma had saved over 760,000 tons of coal while cutting 1.85 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent to planting over 80 million trees. In just four years, the plant's surrounding area transformed more than 2,600 acres of dead land into a green energy oasis. From rabbits, willows, and sand, Wang created a closed value chain encompassing meat, fur, manure, biogas, tourism, and solar energy. From 2010 to 2020 alone, Kubuki's ecological economy generated over $10 billion, becoming Asia's most profitable green model. Then, nature responded. A 2023 report from China's Ministry of Ecology revealed that wild deer, desert foxes, and migratory bird populations in Kubuki had quadrupled since 1990. Species that had vanished completely reappeared in fields once filled only with sand and bones. Groundwater, Kubuki's liquid gold, rose by an average of five to six and a half feet in just 20 years. That means drilling a well today hits water at half the depth compared to a generation ago. That's the difference between dead land and living land. Over 100 native plant species returned, feather grass, desert poplars, desert flowers, creating scenes few would believe possible. Golden sand mixed with green grass and small forest patches sparkling in sunlight. Soil no longer blew away, Instead, it became loose with the earthy smell of life. Now contrast this with Australia, where rabbits caused one of history's worst ecological disasters. In the mid-19th century, just 24 European rabbits arrived with a British settler. Within 50 years, the population exploded to over 1 billion. They ate all grass, destroyed roots, and turned nearly two-thirds of Australia's plains into desert. Each rabbit consumed as much grass as a lamb. When hundreds of millions ate together, the result was catastrophic. The Australian government tried everything, building 2,000-mile fences, releasing myxomatosis virus, even mass shootings. Nothing stopped the rabbit wave. So why are rabbits monsters in Australia but saviors in China? The difference lies in human management. In Kabuki, Rex rabbits are never released wild. They're part of a closed-loop ecosystem, strictly controlled, eating willows, producing manure, enriching soil, generating profit. It's not about raising rabbits. It's about engineering a strategic ecosystem. Behind impressive numbers, Kabuchi hasn't avoided controversy. Some environmentalists argue rabbits represent only a small part of ENN Group's massive economic ecosystem, the company Wang founded. They claim Chinese media exaggerated rabbit roles, while real success factors were government planning, investment, and land management technology. Experts worry rapid expansion could create new ecological pressures. 
rabbit manure, while nutritious, accumulated excessively can cause nitrogen pollution, alter soil pH, and affect groundwater. Some areas have seen green algae appear around natural fertilizer ponds, yet the United Nations sees something different. In 2011, Kubuki was recognized by the UN Convention to Combat Desertification as a global model for desertification control, an honor only a few places worldwide have received. By 2019, it officially became a Global Land Restoration Demonstration Center, internationally recognized as a standard for sustainable development in arid regions. Kubuki's story has spread globally, from Africa's dry lands to Middle Eastern deserts and now Europe, the model is being adapted. In Andalusia, southern Spain, once Rome's granary, rainfall has dropped over 40% in 30 years. Nearly 75% of Spain's land faces desertification threats, making it Europe's driest hotspot. Spain launched the Andalusia Restoration Plan 2030, learning from Kabuki. They're building a Mediterranean green wall, planting millions of olive trees and native grasses, developing regenerative agriculture, and implementing solar farm systems modeled after Kubuchi's approach, growing crops under panels while producing clean electricity. From dead land buried under sand, Kubuki became a symbol of hope. People didn't just conquer nature, they learned to live in harmony with it. If a Chinese desert can return to life, what's stopping the rest of the world? That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.